Welcome to Academic Game Tutorials. This is our second lecture video on operations research. Here, we are learning the graphical method. As we have discussed in previous lecture, we usually get to see four types of cases in graphical method, and in lecture number one, we discussed how to solve and get a unique optimal solution for a linear programming problem using graphical method. So, we have covered the first case in our previous lecture, and in this lecture we will discuss the second case and see how to solve a linear programming problem to get an infinite number of optimal solution by graphical method. After case number 2, there will be two more topics or cases, an unbounded solution, and no solution, we will discuss them in next lectures. So, in this lecture we will discuss an infinite number of optimal solutions for a linear programming problem by graphical method. Let's look at an example on this. So, here we have a linear programming problem, in the previous lecture also we have solved a problem similar to this problem, so, it is important to know that, no matter how many types of cases are there, the question or the linear programming problem will be similar, but only when we get the solution after solving the problem, then we will be able to distinguish the solution as either unique, or infinite, or unbounded, or no solution. So, we will solve this problem in the same method as we have seen in the previous lecture. We are asked to solve this linear programming problem using the graphical method. Here, it is given that, maximize, z equals to 100x1, plus 40x2. Subject to these three given inequality equations. Where there are two variables in each of them. And, at last it is said that x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to zero. So, let's solve this problem now. At first, we will replace all the inequality constraints by using equation. Here we can see three inequalities in these three equations. We will simply replace all these three inequalities or unequal signs by using equal signs, and convert them into equations. So, the first equation will be, 5x1, plus 2x2, equals to, 1000. The second equation will be, 3x1, plus 2x2, equals to, 900. And, x1, plus 2x2, equals to, 500. So, all these three inequalities are converted to three equations. This is equation number 1, this is equation number 2, and, this is equation number 3. We have seen two methods of plotting the graph in previous lecture, you can use any one of the two methods that seem easier to you for plotting the graph. The first method seems simple to me, so I will use the first method for plotting the graph where we have to divide the whole equation by the number on right hand side, and then plot the values in the graph. So, to plot the equation 1 on graph, first look at the right hand side of the equation number 1, here we have 1000 on the right hand side of the equation, so, we will divide the whole equation number 1 by the number 1000. Dividing the equation number 1 by 1000, we will get, 5x1 divided by 1000, which gives us, x1 divided by 200, plus, 2x2 divided by 1000, which gives us, x2 divided by 500, equals to, 1000 divided by 1000, which is 1. Similarly in equation 2 also, here we have 900 on the right hand side of the equation number 2, so, we will divide the whole equation number 2 by the number 900. Dividing the equation number 2 by 900, we will get, 3x1 divided by 900, which gives us, x1 divided by 300, plus, 2x2 divided by 900, which gives us, x2 divided by 450, equals to, 900 divided by 900, which gives us 1. Similarly in equation 3 also, here we have 500 on the right hand side of the equation number 3, so, we will divide the whole equation number 3 by the number 500. Dividing the equation number 3 by 500, we will get, x1 divided by 500 plus, 2x2 divided by 500, which gives us, x2 divided by 250, equals to, 500 divided by 500, which gives us 1. Now, we know that the equation for straight line is, x divided by a, plus y divided by b, equals to 1, here, a, 
is the intercept of x axis, b is the intercept of y axis, and then there is one on the right hand side. Now, if we compare the straight line equation to these three equations, we can see the same format. Here, in equation 1, 200 is the intercept of x1, 500 is the intercept of x2, and there is one on the right hand side, so, this is a straight line equation. Similarly, the other two equations are also straight line equations. We can now plot these intercepts or values of x1 and x2 on the graph to get the lines. So, this is one method of finding the intercepts or values of x1 and x2 to draw the lines on the graph. We also discussed another way of finding the intercepts or values of x1 and x2 for plotting the graph. Let me show the method once again. In another method, let's take this first equation. Now, we have assumed that x1 equals to 0. Now if the value of x1 is 0, then we get the value of x2 will be 500. Again we assume, x2 equals to 0. Now if the value of x2 is 0, then we get the value of x1 will be 200. So, what will be our coordinates for the points? Here we have, 0, comma, 500, and here we have, 200, comma, 0. Similarly, we can get the points for other two equations also. So, we can either plot these two points on the graph and join them to get the lines. Or we can use the first method to directly divide the whole equation number 1 by 1000, where we can take 200 as intercept for x1 in the x-axis, and 500 as the intercept for x2 in the y-axis, and plot them on the graph to get the desired lines. Now, we will plot all these three straight line equations on a graph. So, here we have our graph, we have used a plain sheet to make the graph, you can use a graph paper if you want. Along this axis we have x1. Along this axis we have x2. And, this point is the origin or 0. Now, on the graph we can see that the ranges are taken as 0, 100, 200, 300, up to 600. We have taken the points at distance of 100 in this case, because if we see here below x1 and x2 in these three equations, the values are 200, 500, 300. 450, 250. So if we take distance of 100 on the graph then it will be easy to plot. In the conditions it was given that x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to 0. So, this is the quadrant where we will plot the lines. Now, to plot the first equation in the graph, in equation number 1, below x1 there is 200, below x2 there is 500. So, we have 200, and 500. In the graph, we will take a point at 200 on the x1 axis, and along x2 we take a point at 500. Now, we will join this point at 200, and this point at 500, using a line. Let's denote this line by number 1, so we can understand that this line was plotted from equation number 1. Now, in equation number 2, below x1 there is 300, below x2 there is 450, so, we have 300, and 450. In the graph, we will take a point at 300 on the x1 axis, and along x2 we take a point at 450 between 400 and 500. Now, we will join this point at 300, and this point at 450, using a line. Let's denote this line by number 2, so we can understand that this line was plotted from equation number 2. Similarly, in equation number 3, below x1 there is 500, below x2 there is 250, so, we have 500, and 250. In the graph, we will take a point at 500 on the x1 axis, and along x2 we take a point at 250 between 200 and 300. Now, we will join this point at 500, and this point at 250, using a line. Let's denote this line by number 3, so we can understand that this line was plotted from equation number 3. Now, if we check with the second method, we got two points over here for the first equation. First we have, 0, comma, 500, which is at this point, and then we have, 200, comma, 0, which is at this point. We join these two points and then we get the same line one that we got using the first technique. 
Similarly, we can plot the other two lines also using this technique, since this first method seems easier for me, so I am using this first technique, the result will be same for both techniques. So, here we have three lines for three equations, now, we will look for inequalities. Now, if we look into the conditions given at first in the question, according to the first condition, the first line will be less than or equal to 1000, so, in the line number 1, we will place arrows towards the origin, because there is less than or equal to sign. Similarly, according to the second condition, the second line will be less than or equal to 900, so, in the line number 2, we will place arrows towards the direction of the origin, because there is less than or equal to sign. Similarly, according to the third condition, the third line will be less than or equal to 500, so, in the line number 3, we will place arrows towards the direction of the origin, because there is less than or equal to sign. Now, we have to find out the common region for these three lines that is satisfied by the direction of the arrows in these three lines, here, we can see that all arrows are facing in the same direction towards the origin, there is no arrow facing the opposite direction. In the line number 1, the arrow is facing in this direction towards the origin, so line 1 covers this area towards the origin, we mark it with light yellow shade. In the line number 2, the arrow is facing in this direction towards the origin, so line 2 covers this area towards the origin, we mark it with orange shade. In the line number 3, the arrow is facing in this direction towards the origin, so line 3 covers this area towards the origin, we mark it with green shade. If we look carefully, this is the only common and feasible region that is covered by all the three lines on the graph, this region is satisfied by the direction of the arrows in these three lines, this common region is covered by the shades of all the three lines, so, this is our feasible region where the arrows of all the three lines are facing towards this region only. So, there are four extreme points or four corners in this region, one corner point over here, one corner point over here, one point over here, and the fourth point over here, so, these are the four extreme points or corner points that make this feasible region. Let, this extreme corner point is A, this is point B, this is point C, and this is point D. Now, we have found out that this is our feasible region, and the four extreme corner points of this feasible region is denoted A, B, C, and D. Now, we have to find out the value of the extreme points. We have written the four extreme points A, B, C, and D over here. Now, we can see that, the value of the point A is, 0, comma, 0, that is, at point A, x1 is 0, and x2 is also 0. We also know that the value of the point B is, 200, comma, 0. Now, we don't know the value of point C. If we were doing this graph on a graph paper then hopefully we could count and find out the position of the point C, but since we are doing the graph on a plane sheet, we have to find out the position of point C or value of point C through calculation. But, we know that the value of the point D is, 0, 250. Now, let's find out where the point C is located. For point C, we can see that, the point C is at the intersection of the line 1 and line 3. So, if we solve equation 1, and equation 3, then the value of x1 and x2 we get is the value of the point C at the intersection of these two lines 1 and 3. Let's solve equation 1 and 3 in rough, here we have equation 1, and here we have equation 3. If we subtract equation 3 from equation 1, we get, 4x1, equals to, 500. So, x1, equals to, 125, now put value of x1 equals to 125 in any of the equations we get x2 equals to 187.5, so, we have x1 equals to 125, and x2 equals to 187.5, thus, 125, comma, 187.5, is the value of point C at the point of intersection of line 1 and line 3, so, value of the point C is, 125, comma, 187.5. So, we know the values of the four extreme points in the feasible region. Now, 
In the question, we are asked to maximize z equals to 100x1 plus 40x2. So, we have to find out the values of z for the points A, B, C, and D. First, value of z at point A. The equation of z is z equals to 100x1 plus 40x2 for point A, x1 equals to 0, and x2 equals to 0. Putting the values of x1 and x2 we get 100 into 0 plus 40 into 0 or z equals to 0. So, value of z at point A is 0. Again, value of z at point B. For point B, x1 equals to 200 and x2 equals to 0. Putting the values of x1 and x2 we get 100 into 200 plus 40 into 0 or z equals to 20,000, so, value of z at point B is 20,000. Again, value of z at point C. For point C, x1 equals to 125, and x2 equals to 187.5, putting the values of x1 and x2 we get, 100 into 125, plus, 40 into 187.5, or, z equals to 20,000, so, value of z at point c is 20,000. Again, value of z at point d. For point d, x1 equals to 0, and x2 equals to 250, putting the values of x1 and x2 we get, 100 into 0, plus, 40 into 250, or, z equals to 10,000, so, value of z at point d is 10,000. Now, in the question, in front of the equation of z, it is written, maximize z. Since it is asked to maximize z, we have to find out the maximum value of z, and among the four values of z, 0, 20,000, again 20,000, and 10,000, the highest or maximum value of z is 20,000. So, we have two values of z as 20,000 at point B and point C. So, it is a tie between the two, and we have two maximum values of z at point B and point C. Now, since there are more than one points with maximum value of z, so, not only at point B and point C, we will get the maximum value of z at all the infinite number of points that can be drawn in this joining line in between point B and point C, not outside the feasible region, only inside the feasible region along with point B and point C, we will get the maximum value of z at all the infinite number of points that can be drawn in this joining line in between point B and point C. If we were asked to minimize z, then we could simply say that minimum value of z is 0 at point A, but the problem is asking us to maximize z. So, we can finally write that the maximum value of z occurs at two vertices or extreme points P and C. If you plot this graph in a graph paper, then in this joining line of point P and C, if you take any point from this line, and find the value of that point, then put the value of x1 and x2 for that point in this equation of z, then you will get the same maximum result of z, which is 20,000. So, we can write that, since, there are infinite number of points on the line joining B and C, all the infinite number of points gives the same maximum value of z. Hence, there is an infinite number of optimal solutions for this linear programming problem. So, this was an example of an infinite number of optimal solution by graphical method for a linear programming problem. In the next lecture we will look into the examples for the other two cases of graphical method, which were unbounded solution, and no solution. Thank you for watching this video.